We have finally did it. It took ages to beat level 8-5. I thought we were going to need Beryl. We were going to summon on her to try to get her. And I ended up finally figuring out a formation that actually worked for this. As you can see, we used one free-to-play legendary unit. An Epic Abyss, two rare units. We have the VS, known as Floridian Scout. We have Papal Ice Mage. Then we have the Outlaws right here. I'm going to show you guys the formation. If I do sound tired, it's because this map stressed me out so much. I did it over 30-something times. I tried to figure out going headstrong, going from above, going from below. I did every possible aspect. I was looking on YouTube. I saw people beating it with barrel using the firewall trick. It is impossible without her, but we finally got it all done. So Papal Ice Priest, you want to make sure you have, which you should, the ice cone. And that's about it. That's all we used. We used this one right here. You need to make sure that you also have a few talents unlocked. And I'll show you guys which talents I used. The Viridian Scout over here. Ended up putting Cole's equipment on. So we have the Void Scab. And then we have this one. We got pretty lucky with our legendary gear. We got this uh, use healing, which we use on one of the bosses. So we got that one. You're going to be heavily using Shrapnel, which is very important. For Abyss, here we have this Staff that should do um, RNG, does a 40% chance to receive it. You're going to be using her at the end when you're going up against Samantha, and you're going to want to use this skill, Dark Ripple. So make sure, do not use it so that you're wasting the three energy. Make sure she has energy because at towards the end when she's about to die, you want to use this to avoid her from regaining any health. Because when Samantha dies, in this one, she regains a good amount of HP. Here we have the Outlaw Assassin. I did not even put a thing on him. He will be a fodder towards the end, but don't even worry about it. You don't even have to equip anything. As long as you have just a weapon on, on him is fine. You're going to also be using Shrapnel. This dude is a complete ninja. You're going to see him going from one point of the map across to the other side of the map like a ninja. For the Outlaw Archer, same thing, mostly utilizing the Luxite Shrapnel. Also, it's good to have this on him, Attack Down 2, just because that Shrapnel, there is a chance to hit the AoE, and because you have this skill, you're going to have a 50% chance to cause Attack 2. And then the Man of the Hour that actually helped out towards about the half halfway point is Fakal. You're going to use this skill right here, so make sure you have it. The Arrow of Guardian Convalaria, where you have Alert, and it actually interrupts the unit. This is going to be coming in handy. As for the talents that were used, we ended up... So this is what you usually run in Tower of Conquest. You always run Urgent Order and March Command. In this one, you actually want to run Maneuver Command. If you have level 1... Great, I still have it at level 1 and I beat it. If you have level 2, you're going to want to potentially upgrade to level 2 because depending on the placement. If you guys pause the video at any point just to see or even go back, you can. This is the formation that we have. Now, one thing that you want, you want to know, if you have Barrel, Barrel goes in the position of where Papal Ice Priest is. And she basically sets up a firewall along the fountain over here. And then the turn 2 over here which is going to push all these units over here. And basically, you're just going to keep throwing stuff at them so these three die. And up here, you're going to want at least three units going right along this line right here so that the boulder can roll and kill at least two units, which primarily it's going to kill Vine and Papal Ice Mage. It's going to keep Stormbreaker at about maybe 40%. Anywhere from 40 to 50, about 40% health. This Samantha is absolutely insane. You get in her AoE, you're dead. These two guys right here, these two are absolutely insane together. 
but luckily we're going to show you guys exactly what we did we're going to pause it from here from time to time to just show you everything because it might go pretty fast so on the bottom floor we have uh, vs abyss and papal ice priest now vs is Floridian scout i don't want to keep saying vs but we have that here up top we have fakal up here this is the recruited assassin or a and then we have the OA, which is the Outlaw Archer. Now, we're going to start by putting, doing March Command right off the bat. And we're going to move Papal Ice Priest right next to the barrel. All right. Then we're going to move some units down so they can get out of the way. Excuse me. You see right here, we're going to use Viridian Scout to throw the shrapnel to do some damage and move down. We're going to now look at this movement. You could see with March Command, we started up here. We're going all the way down to grab this potion because sometimes these guys like to use the potion and you do not want that to happen. Then you make your way and maneuver yourself to this box. What you're gonna do is throw a shrapnel right there, inflict that, get this other one and go right there, just like a ninja. Fikel is gonna move back and do nothing. Then what you ended up seeing was, hold on, let me just wait until it's my turn. What you ended up seeing was, let me just wait until it's my units to move. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da. Come on, move. All right, perfect. It should be our turn now. So, Papal Ice Priest was right here, right? Where this Lance guy would be, which I think, I don't, I don't even know this guy's name right here. So, if we would have been here, he would have been dead. So, we ended up using the maneuver command to teleport him right here is a perfect place because these guys are going to regroup with the vs we're going to move him right by the fountain and we're also going to move this ra over to this stand where over here fakel is going to come up to this fountain and then blow up the barrel which is going to be doing a good amount of damage boom as you can see that blows up the thing this guy's almost dead these guys are about a little bit over half we're going to move down we're going to shoot the barrel, we're going to kill those two units, and we're going to move back. Round three, Papal Ice Mage is just setting up some ice. Abyss is not doing anything yet, I'm just pressing standby on her. As you can see, everyone is regrouping towards the Outlaw Archer, and we feel bad for him because, no, maybe he might die, maybe he might not. Now, this is where the interrupt alert action comes in. You have Fakel sitting up next to this, just in case anyone wants to come up here and do some damage to him. It's in the vicinity, so boom, he's going to get shot, interrupt any of these two units. And uh, But this is what we're going to do. We're actually going to... I'll show you now. I don't want to spoil it. So we move, use shrapnel, which ends up killing the lance. And then we're going to use the teleportation maneuver and put this unit right around this area right here where my mouse is. As you can see, round four starts. We're going to maneuver him there. We're going to add more ice just in case so they don't want to try to attack him. Boom, right there. Interruption. We have shrapnel doing uh, damage over time. We have another shrapnel right there. We have shrapnel right there again. We have Fakel moving back. And because of the ice, they're not going to be moving that well. So they're not going to be trying to attack us. So 4,000 overtime damage on that unit. Unite is also going to die from 6,500 damage. Now we're just regrouping. We're making sure everyone is set up. Everyone gets their energy. And this is where Abyss is going to shine. As you can see, Samantha is setting up her AoE. Now, mind you, in this red area right here, as soon as she's got to do that AoE, people are going to die. So make sure to stay out of it. So our goal is to get Stormbreaker to die. So we're going to just regroup move down position do some standby action we're not doing anything so we're going to put some ice down just to slow down the movement aoe is going to kill some boxes oh well, not really so 300 damage on that 200 damage on that we're going to do march command again do some shrapnel to affect the both of them go downstairs do the same thing shrapnel go downstairs then we're going to do foot stopping which is going to make her not move that much because she will do a nice damage when it comes to after the aoe she does that one little strike thing if you guys played story mode so we're going to use that and then move a few steps back we're going to do another shrapnel on her only because this is going to die soon 
We're going to come down, do another layer of ice so it blocks Storm, and he dies. Or she dies, sorry. Stormbreaker dies. Now we're going to go in for the kill, do some damage. We teleported Abyss. As you can see, because now we're going in for the kill. If we decide to kill Samantha, she's going to gain HP. All right, we do not want that to happen. So we ended up teleporting Abyss from this direction to over here, which is what it permitted us to because it's four tiles only. So we got one, two, three, four. And when it's her turn, she's going to use her Dark Ripple effect, which is going to actually stop her from healing. So we're going to do this. Round nine. Papal Ice Mage is going to stay still. Dark Ripple. Only did 83 damage, but look what happens now. I told you, RA is going to be a Death Fodder. So, right there, death fodder, boom. Because of all the shrapnel and everything, she dies, taking almost 2,000 damage. She completely dies, and we win the battle. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.